How's it going guys? So for today's video, I want to take you on a behind the scenes look at a music video that Kristen and I recently shot for our good friends, Meech Pango, down at a room called The Function in Fort Worth. So come join me. Let's take a look at how we did it. So just to get this out of the way, you can watch the video, it's linked down below if you're interested, but I want to start by talking about the overall concept of the video, what the band brought to me, and how I kind of interpreted that and started the process. So the guys were interested in doing a one-shot music video and it being kind of in a blank space, so for me that means kind of a studio setting. It also means somewhere where it can be kind of dark and more controlled, because if you do something with more of a psych wall type look, it's a little bit more difficult to light it and just deal with different things. If you have a darker space, I think you have a little bit more control of how you want to dial in the exact looks that you're wanting to achieve. So it, it was a blank space, and the concept of the video is that the band members were either coming back into the picture or coming out of the picture. The song was kind of about feeling isolated, uh, quarantine, all of that stuff. So essentially we would need to be making some seamless cuts to make it appear to be a one take music video. And then we would also need to have some blocking to allow the band to maybe exit at a certain point and then come back in and uh, use a couple of different locations to make that work. So that's how we started. And the next step was to start to kind of determine the blocking of of camera movement and we did that actually on a pool table at one of their houses and we just determined okay this is how the camera is gonna move and we were looking at kind of a shot list that one of the band members had created and we were determining okay the camera is gonna be here and this is where it's going to move and at this point in the song this is what's going to happen so on and so forth so we spent a lot of time in pre-production just blocking things out and getting an idea even then though you can only account for so much when you're just looking at a pool table you don't know how all of the perspectives and lighting and different things are going to work when you actually get to the venue. I got something I'm going to show you on the TV screens. <laughs> So let's talk about the venue for a second and some of the challenges associated with that specifically. We chose a place called The Function in Fort Worth. It's a very affordable, very big space that was just a raw space that we could do a lot of different things. We could turn off all the lights. And the only real challenge with this space was that there was some graffiti on the walls. And while we didn't really mind if that showed up in the video, we definitely didn't want it to be a focal point of the video. So for the most part, we needed our lighting to be at a level that made the graffiti less noticeable. So that was the challenge leading up into the rehearsal. We wanted a 360 degree setup that we could rotate around and do all these different things in. We wanted to mitigate shadows. We wanted to mitigate how much of the art on the wall that we saw. So we approached the rehearsal trying to just figure out what things are gonna work and what things aren't going to work from the pre-production aspect of it. It turned out that the most difficult thing in the rehearsal was not getting my shadow in it or getting the focus to behave the way I wanted it to behave and not lock on to the wrong thing. So with the majority of the video being shot on the gimbal, it being a very low budget, small crew, we didn't have that much room to have a first AC or have a follow focus setup or anything like that. So we were relying on autofocus. We were relying on the gimbal movement. You know, we had to deal with any shake that might be present. So one of the tools that really came in handy for us for a couple of reasons was the Hollyland Mars 400 receiver. Um, that thing made it so much easier that we could have somebody monitoring the footage that we were getting but then also one cool aspect of the venue that we were shooting is they had these old TVs that we kind of wanted to incorporate into the shoot and we could send a feed to those TVs, which was really cool from the camera to the TVs. So that was a really cool effect that we were able to achieve and just having somebody monitor, hey, the focus didn't look good or the movement didn't look right. Or especially when we were doing moves that were gonna require a cut, we could use that person getting the feed to line those up so it could be 
as seamless as it could possibly be if you're making a cut. So my interpretation of how difficult the shoot was going to be was definitely pretty high after the rehearsal. There were a lot of things that I just kind of thought were going to fall into place that I realized that were gonna require a little bit more planning, namely some of the cutting points and some of the timing was just a little bit further off than I had originally anticipated based on how we were monitoring it. That being said, we found some really cool concepts that we actually really liked from the rehearsal. Uh, we had this scene where the band was on a couch and we had the disco ball going, we had the star filter going. So this whole sequence kind of came about during the rehearsal and how that was going to evolve into the rest of the song really came about during the rehearsal when we got to see the space. And I think that's actually one of my favorite parts of the video. But yeah, we also knew it was going to be a pretty big challenge, so that leads us to the shoot day. So we pretty much booked the whole day at the function. We knew this was going to be a pretty long shoot. We didn't know if we were gonna try and get multiple takes or try to dial in one really fantastic take where it all syncs up together and is timed out together. So anyways, we booked the whole day. We used quite a bit of that time and uh, now is probably a good time to talk about the lighting because that was one of the major challenges and it was my first time getting to use the Aperture Spotlight Mount. We actually rented one for this shoot and it's a tool that I really love. I don't know if I could justify the cost to own one personally, but this was really great because it allowed us a very controlled area of light that was going to also allow the background to fall off. You'd be really surprised if you tried to light this with, let's say, two Aperture 300Ds with Fresnel lenses. You'd be really surprised how much spill you'd get lighting such a big space. So the spotlight mount was pretty critical to even achieving this look and utilizing the space properly. In addition to this, we had a 300D providing kind of an edge light and you know extra lens flares that could be achieved with that. And then also we had our trusty Nanlite Pavo tubes. Those lights are becoming some of my favorite, most versatile tools uh, that we own. And those were really critical to just kind of get a little bit of that warmth and just add a little bit of interest into the background and then also utilize those during segments like that couch sequence and uh, really make them look super cool with the star filter. So I think the star filter sequence was really one of the most impressive parts of it, one of my favorite parts to film. Uh, it's by a company called Prism Lens FX. This company makes some of my all-time favorite products. If you know any filmmakers, this is probably the absolute best website to get them a birthday present because their filters are very affordable and they're also very good, very fun, very creative. So their star filter was key to making this scene look different, having an element of progression throughout the video and uh, I really liked how that looked. So when we were filming the video, it was split up into about five or six different segments that had transitions at the beginning and end of them. Some of them whips, some of them kind of orbits, and uh, we took those five or six segments, we probably filmed about seven or eight takes of each one before we were really happy with the timing and how everything worked out. And even then, when I brought it all into the edit, I did have to do some manipulation to make everything timed out properly to the proper moment. You'd be surprised how hard it is when you're trying to do a transition on a certain beat, how hard it is to actually dial that in, even if you think you did it exactly right on the shoot day. And through all of this, credit to the band, their performance were amazing. I was never like, oh, we have to throw out this take because you guys didn't bring energy or didn't do a good enough job. They were pretty much on point every time we did a take and it was just more to dial in those technical aspects to make sure it was perfect. So we kept that workflow of having me obviously on the gimbal shooting and then having somebody monitoring and dialing in all of those transitions and then also having somebody play a track, having somebody kind of run lights and do some extra grip type help. And uh, it was a really good setup. It was a small crew. We got it done in a day and I was really happy about it. But now I just want to talk very briefly about the edit and just about my overall kind of concept. And obviously the editing was very simple. I mean, it is supposed to just look like one seamless take. So most of the effects were done in camera, but I will say one of the things that I did like about the color grade it was the Joel 
Famularo uh, Phantom LUTs. These things are fantastic. We shot this on the A7S Mark III. We shot it before we actually got the A1. So this video was all done on the A7S Mark III. Sometimes we did have to bring that ISO up to the 12,800 for certain segments without the spotlight mount. Um, but anyways, those LUTs looked fantastic. I have full confidence shooting S-Log, even if it's a darker scene. So I loved how the color grade turned out, loved all of those in-camera effects like the star filter. I would say one of the important concepts of the video to me was just the overall texture and how it felt. I put a dirty film mat over it, a very subtle 16 by nine film mat. But then also about halfway through the song, we start to bring in more and more texture and it kind of plays into the overall theme with the TVs and the static, adding that level of texture and energy and progression to the video. So that was probably my favorite thing I did in terms of the edit. But yeah, overall, I'm super happy with how it turned out. And that is how you execute a one take music video with a complete small crew, low budget, and make it look, I think, really nice. So let me know if you guys have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.